Hi guys, Jason and Nick on the Utter Farm. We're actually on the Utter Farm this afternoon. My, dis my topic today is going to be gully erosion. I've got several areas on the farm with gully erosion, one being pretty extensive. So what I'm going to cover today is why gully erosion happens, the three stages of gully erosion, and how to, to prevent and or remediate any gully erosion you've got. Okay, we'll uh, head into the paddock. Right, I will start off with the basics. The why and how is due to surface runoff water, otherwise known as overland flow. It occurs on the ground surface when excessive rainwater, stormwater, meltwater, or any other source for that matter, can no longer sufficiently infiltrate the soil. This can occur when either the soil reaches a saturation point and or it arrives quicker then the soil can absorb it. And in particular, we got several locations in our paddocks that I know we've got an issue with the erosion. The water runs down the paddock in drain lines similar to this one I'm standing in. So it rains, it cannot soak into the paddocks, and then all diverges to locations like this, and it runs down through these drain lines and picks up momentum or velocity as it goes. Gully erosion occurs when runoff water concentrates and flows strong enough that it removes soil along the drain lines. Now there are three, three stages to gully erosion. That's waterfall erosion, channel erosion along the gully bed, and landslide erosion on the gully banks. Waterfall erosion will occur when the water picks up enough energy that it, when it comes through, it plunges over the gully head and what happens then is when it hits the base in the gully head it then starts eroding the subsoil and as it's splashing up it slowly eats away the back wall of the gully head now this is a prime example guys of waterfall erosion so it goes over this gully head here picks a men and splashes out the bottom rips all that soil out which that would have been at ground level at one stage it's all been chewed out and then it splashes and you can see here it's concaved. It's chewing the back wall out. So this is where prevention comes into play. Before it gets too bad, what we plan doing here is putting gabions in. What a gabion in is it's a metal wire cage. So we'll make a cage, wire it together and we'll make it fit that location. We'll put it in, we'll bury it down a little bit and then we'll fill it with rocks and then we'll wire the top of that cage up or gabion up and then around it we'll throw cane mulch or, or hay mulch to really jam it tight so there's no voids and what happens then is the water will come down and it'll actually trickle over that edge and it won't actually plunge down and splash anymore. So the idea is to slow the flow. Channel erosion occurs when the forces of water on the gully bed or gully banks is greater than the resistance of the material that the gully bed or gully banks are made of and it can escalate quite rapidly it's dependent on the contours of your drain lines also the surface roughness of your gully bed and also the volume of water the velocity of water but more so what really escalates the erosion is the sediment or particles which is flowing through the water as it comes down through your drain like soil, sand, pebbles etc. As you can see here guys I've got a perfect example of channel erosion. It's come all the way through here. I've, I've parted this grass so we can I'll give you a, a good example. You can see here where it's taken a foot, approximately a foot of the side wall has gone on both sides. So what I plan to do here is, this would be another um, method where I want to prevent it from escalating to full on gully erosion, which I'll show you in a minute. Similar to what I was going to do up there, the waterfall, I'm going to cut out the banks and put a gabion in here and fill it with rocks. I'll do that in multiple places down this hill before I hit the creek and that'll alleviate the velocity of the water, it'll slow the flow. It'll come through, hit the rocks, sediment will pack in behind it. And if I get a back, back up of water, that's good because I'll be using that water 
to then hydrate the land adjacent. It'll flow through at a slower rate, numerous places down there, and that should uh, prevent it from getting worse. Landslide erosion occurs when the soil reaches saturation point around the gully banks, undermining and scouring out that channel erosion, at which point then the banks start to collapse in, big chunks, wedges of the soil collapse. As you can see here, I'm getting a coal to come in. All this behind me or what I'm standing on is clay of the topsoil. So it's undermined, as you can see around there, it's undermined the bank. It's all fallen in. So, this here guys is known as the head cut because the flow of the water comes in this direction from our paddocks. So this is the, what they call the head cut and it's getting into what they call headward erosion. What headward erosion is, is it actually runs in the opposite direction of the flow of the water. So as the water's coming down the gully and runs over this gully edge, it erodes off this corner and this corner slowly goes, erodes off and moves back in that direction because it's been eroded off whilst the flow is in this direction. So it's moving away from the flow of the water. So that's what they call headward erosion. As you can see, this area is well beyond preventative measures. Unlike the waterfall erosion and the channel erosion, we can prevent it from getting to this stage. This is, we're at a stage of remediation here. As you can see, we've already started. So the, the steps of remediation is, you have to stabilize the soil around the landslide erosion. So the first step is to slow the flow. What we've done guys is, we've started to put hay in here. We got 25, hay bales, mulch bales, and we've already rolled 12 in here. We rolled them out right down to the bottom of the tree there, the first one. So there's a tree behind that which stops that going any further. And then we've rolled them in, spread what we could. And as you can see, we had like, I think we had two inches of rain out here in the last two weeks. And as you can see, the, the, we've already continued with the landslide is already happening. Like that, we could see the bottom of that bale and it's already halfway up the top. But that's good guys, that's what you want, you're slow on the flow. And what I've stopped is, when that head cut still keeps eroding, rather than that soil being washed down the gully drains, it's now silting up, we basically made silt trap, it's silting up behind the hay, so we're storing the soil where we need it, not in our creek. So, the first step, slow the flow. The second step is to stabilize the gully walls, which you can see over here, guys. This is badly eroded out here. And as you can see, it's underpinned and underscored the bank here. So it's right underneath there, about a foot. So that's gonna keep coming down if we don't do anything about it soon. So what we're gonna do here is, when we finish rolling out the hay, we plan to get in the excavator. And what I'll get the excavator to do then is cut these banks down on a 45 degree angle. What that does is that'll slow the flow over the edge. It'll stop the, the banks, the walls at 90 degree getting that heavy and collapsing. And over at the gully head here, you can see this is the area that just flown down recently onto that area we showed you in front of the bale. So this is still eroding away. That's pretty square. That's 90 degrees at about a foot. You see the cracks already forming here. So it's already starting to break up the soil. Any more rain coming in the near future, and that'll just keep collapsing that down. Now the other side there, down here, I'll show you what's, this has only been relative movement. I'll get Nicole to follow me down to here. This is all new movement too, guys. As you can see, that used to be the ground level, which is roughly at my head height now. And it's down here. So this has been a recent collapse. So that was to wash away now. That wouldn't go any further than the soil. So we're keeping it on. So the third one is to do, I was, I was, the first one was to stabilize, which we've done, slow the flow. Second one was to work on the gully walls. We're gonna bring them at 45. The third one was to then do the gully head. So we'll bring that head at 45 degrees where the major flow is to stop the gully head caving in. 
The fourth one would be then what we can do is armour the soil, which is one of the five principles of regenerative farming. So we'll seed that 45 degree cut that's made by the excavator, we'll seed it, and then we'll roll out more mulch hay on top of that. So when it does rain, you're stopping the velocity of that rain hitting the bare dirt. So it'll actually stop the velocity, it'll slowly seep through that soil and germinate those seeds. So we may have to plant a few lots of seeds and may have to roll hay over multiple times until we get the seed bank that we require so it's not going to erode. And we'll have to monitor this in the middle here because we know this is going to eventually mulch down you know, organic matter back to soil. That, that'll drop down. So any areas we got on the edges, which are still at 90, we can either roll more hay in or we can then keep taking those at 45 degree angle and go for the same principle, seed, hay. But then the last principle we've got to do is number five would be to fence the animals out. Whilst we're still trying to restore the soil, you need to keep the animals out because if it rains and they're on top of that hay and the seed, the weight of those cows are just going to, their hooves are just going to slide that bank down. Then you're back to bare one again. Then you've got bare soil, you've got the erosion, you just destroy the grass seeds you put in. So it's keep it out until it's 100% rejuvenated and then slowly bring the livestock in under dry conditions. Right, I'll cover the concerns I've got with gully erosion. The long term plan here, guys, is to build the topsoil back through the use of cattle, livestock, trampling down the pastures, armoring the soil for us, and also rolling bales similar to this on any bare areas we got. What that'll do, guys, is you put armor on the soil, it needs a bit of carbon on the soil to feed the microbiology. Also, it holds the moisture in the soil longer because you've actually prevented the sun from going through. So to bring the microbes back, it'll bring the whole soil will come to life. This hay will break down, it'll start, you know, you start to get your mycorrhizal or fungi, and that's what you need to build overall topsoil. That could take five to 10 years, but you need that topsoil built, not compacted through overgrazing like I've got here at the moment. Loose topsoil will allow more il infiltration of water through, which meaning I'll have less runoff, which meaning Erosion like I've showed you today will not be an issue because the water will be staying on the on the property and not r trying to run off So If you like what you see guys punch that like button it always helps the channel then I know if you like this kind of information I'll make more videos similar um, And subscribe guys uh, it really helps the channel. So we're going to uh, head off now and uh, have a good morning Have a good afternoon and have a great evening and we'll catch you later